Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Wigfield had that mega hit Saturday night, but she's toured around the world for decades under pseudonyms and different names too. And we're delighted to say she joins us on the programme now. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm not bad for me age. Not as good as you, though. I mean, what a life and career. I mean, you've reinvented yourself constantly, have you? You're still touring. You're going to be doing the Reminisce Festival on the 7th of September. I mean, it's all happening for you. Because I never really stopped. I just went on and on and on. <laughs> mm. And I guess you love I mean, it. that's what you've got to do. And that's the toughest thing about being a star, isn't it? It's all very well having the number one hit, but tomorrow you've got to have another one. You know, it's been a while since I've had number one, so <laughs> you have to kind of invent yourself and reinvent yourself and do it over and over and try and against me. Tell me about your life. I mean, were you always singing? Because aside from sort of the campness of Saturday Night, which became that global hit, you've always been a proper singer, haven't you? And an entertainer and a touring artist. Yeah, I have. I, I, I actually began when I was about nine. And it just, everything, like life just went, went that way. I, I, my family was from, I was, I come from a very musical family. My grandfather was, uh, he built that violins and um, I played the violin I just continued to be in music I think that's what I go do mm. for the rest of my life Tell me about growing up in music. It's a different time now. This is, of course, prior to Me Too and all of that. Were you ever involved in any sort of shenanigans where you had to be protected or have somebody step in? Or were people normally respectful towards you? Um, I think because I wasn't really, I didn't really take part of all the the Sun or all these magazines. I mean, I wouldn't, I never really sold out on my private life and I didn't really, I, I was never really a part of that scene. So I think people kind of left me alone because I was doing my, my thing. And so when I had some dodgy interviews to do, I, I always knew how to deal with it. Have you ever known a time when you weren't famous? It's a bizarre thing when you walk in a room getting a round of applause and everybody knowing who you are. When Saturday night went number one, I was in Portugal. I had someone's mobile phone given to me and they said, oh, Miss Wakefield, you're number one. And then I flew out to London. As soon as I went out of the airport, it was just photographers and it was just craziness and madness. And I remember getting back to my hotel room. It was filled with roses from my label and I don't know who. And I just laid in bed and I, I thought, <laughs> how... What should I do now? Now I'm famous. What? How should I act? Because that's what you think. Mm. You think that you have to be someone else, chill and that go shit. And that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Is knowing yourself and having that confidence. I guess not everybody had that. Were you always sort of aware of who you are? I always knew who I wanted to be. I, I never wanted part of being famous because I was famous. I never wanted to do anything silly and, and do photo shoots at my house and all these things. I just, I didn't do music because of fame. I, I do music because this is what I love doing. I still do. I still write music and produce and do lots of things. I don't... Everyone now, there's, there's the fame about being fame crazed, about being famous. you got Celebrity Island, all these, you know, I've been asked loads of times to do Celebrity Big Brother and I don't know what. I just, I don't fit in. Mm. So what is that? Is it because you want to be an artist and known as a singer and you don't want to be hijacked by that reality TV stuff? Because there's a lot of money in it and it does give you fame and immediate fortune, doesn't it? It doesn't necessarily give you longevity. I prefer making money with what I love doing. Mm. I, I mean, if I ever end up uh, maybe one day without a dime and I, I might do a program or not, I don't know. I, I, I really have to think about that. It's not something that I think about now. Mm, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It'd be an easy option to make to say yes to it just for the immediate push. Well, be it might, you know, I mean, I, I might even, I don't know, if I should go to Celebrity Island or what's it called? I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Yes. They would have to pay a lot of money and I would love to, I mean, I wouldn't mind. I grew up in Africa for me looking at spiders and stuff wouldn't be a problem <laughs> <laughs> it's not the spiders you need to worry about it's the other celebrities they're the things that will get on your nerves uh, I've been around a few I can <laughs> handle them 
<laughs> what was your life like? I mean, we go back to that mega hit, of course, which is Saturday night, still getting airplay today. And people sort of scorn when you say one hit wonder. But of course, the joy of that is that immense popularity and that longevity. I mean, still played on the radio and still loved and everybody can sing to it. Was it insane around that time? to so many different independent labels around, you know, around that time that I had to go around and promote different singles at different times and it was like a non-stop, it just went on and on and on. And well, the funny thing is when I, I went to Australia <laughs> and I had to do a tour and because Sexy Eyes was such a big hit, <laughs> every time I'd do Saturday night, people would just stare at me. <laughs> right. Like, what's going on? Yeah. And then, of course, you're back on the road today. You're doing these festivals and continually touring. You're coming back to the UK uh, for Reminisce, which is this festival life, they're calling it. Uh, September 7th will be the date. Is it still thrilling to stand in front of audiences? Do you still have your nerve like you did when you were nine years old? I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the crowd. I love just the whole feeling of doing festivals. I mean, people think, oh, it's so... Like backstage is even worse than front in front of the stage. It's just a big mess and people are, you know, running around and it's just the whole vibe. I think with festivals, I just love doing them and I love the crowd and I have to say the British people they really know how to party. Yeah. And this is going to be taking place at the uh, Sherdley Park in St. Helens. As I say, September 7th is the date, and you can see a ton of acts there, including Wigfield, and you'll be doing that big hit. I guess that's the one they're all waiting for, is it? Because there's no bigger party hit than Saturday night. Well, I did Frankfurt Gay Pride last weekend, and after a couple of songs, I just went... Well, I decided today I'm not going to do Saturday night. <laughs> and people just went, what? <laughs> you can't not do Saturday night. I'm like, okay, let's do it. But you got the thing. <laughs> Do you see yourself as an actress? I mean, I notice you've had various names throughout your career, which is odd. Not many performers do that. It's more of a sort of actress thing to do. Was that intentional that you wanted to sort of be reborn with different lives as a musician? Um, because every project was different. I was, you know, I've been doing chill music, house projects. Um, I was lucky enough to get signed with Armada a couple of years back and release some house music with them. And I just think every project had to be separate from the Wickfield project because the sound is so different and I just thought that's, you know, that's the way it should be. Mm. Um, but I've got a new Wickfield tune coming out like later after the summer, so hopefully I'll be back on track. Do you retire on a song like Saturday Night? Does it make you a millionaire and do the checks keep rolling in or was it a one-time payment and now it's all gone? Um, money still comes in because it's and Fantastic. I still make money with touring and um, I haven't blown the whole thing. I think because I was wise enough then to buy property and think about what I should do next. Um, maybe because I'm also a bit tight with money. <laughs> <laughs> I always hold on to my money. That's something I, I grew up with since I was a little girl. Yeah. Every megastar I've ever interviewed said, if you forget it's show business, you're finished. I guess that's the key, is it? Remembering that it is a business and the show comes second, because if you get the business wrong, you're finished. Well, my producer always said, remember, it's not going to last forever. And I always had that in my head. Mm. Yeah, very wise. But having said that, you're still at it and still loving it. And to have that adoring crowd, and I think the nostalgia we've got for the Take That and the Westlife and the Boy Zones and the Wigfields, all in that same banner of that sort of wonderful 90s feel, because it was an amazing time for music, wasn't it? It was so exciting. I'm not sure we could say the same today. It's all very similar, but it, back then, there were one hit sort of wonders like Saturday Night and artists like you that just brought the whole thing to life. Hugely exciting. Well, it was different. I think maybe songs were more... No, you could sing along to them. Mm. It was, of course, it was easier for us artists because there was loads of money thrown at us from labels, and that's not really the situation we're in today. Like nowadays, you you really have to find your own. You know, I mean, depends what kind of your artist you are. I mean, if you do a lipper or, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
It was a great time and uh, you'll be reliving it. It's back. Reminisce is going to be taking place on Saturday, 7th of, uh, September 2019 at Sherdley Park in St. Helens. You can see Reminisce Festival Life and uh, see Wigfield down there with a ton of other artists too. I guess it's a party backstage as much as it is in the audience. You guys are going to have fun re-meeting after all this time. It must be thrilling to still be here and still be at it. Um, I always hang out with my, my friends, but uh, the guys from the Vendor Boys, Rosala, Big E, it's just one big reunion every time we meet up. It's just amazing mm. and that we're still alive. And I get, well, exactly. <laughs> and I guess you've still, you've all lived the same life and you've all had the same stresses. So it must be thrilling to still be here in 2019. How fantastic. It's the same. It doesn't change. It's the same stress, the same problems, the same sound problems. <laughs> we yes. all have the same, you know, <laughs> since 25 years. Is so, the sound guy your best friend, friend or your friend. worst enemy? That's the first person you have to meet up with and make friends with. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's going to make or break <laughs> you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, great to talk to you, Wigfield. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we should say, of course, because everybody knows you as that, but but that's not your real name. Of course, Sani Charlotte Carlson is your real name, and that's how we should address you on this. Wigfield, of course, is the artist and the star of that fabulous song, Saturday Night, which you can hear at Reminisce. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much. Have a great evening.